And you can just tell me your name and where you're from. Therese Crapel from Louisiana, actually Jefferson Parish. And how have you been impacted by this film? Um, you know, the first when it happened, of course, just the devastation and the loss of lives, and um, that was our main focus. And then no one seen this coming at all, that the devastation that would follow afterwards. Of course, being a seafood restaurant, um, and you have seafood literally in your backyard, um, we were... we worked on our rotation of using shrimp um, people who went trawling and oystermen go out that morning call me up how many you know pounds of shrimp you want they'd bring back 600 pounds we'd process it would use that seafood for our restaurant um we've got no seafood this year none at all oysters first two things on our menus there's no oysters um, everything, you know, everything that you knew at one time is no longer. We're going to seafood brokers and buying seafood, and it is good f seafood, but it's not what we're accustomed to. People in our area used to eating fresh seafood straight off the boat. You know, growing up, our parents got ice chests of shrimp. We processed it ourselves and put it up, so we are accustomed to what we're used to, and that's not the case anymore. Now, I call a broker the shrimp go through probably five different ownerships before I actually get it. And um, and we're just trying to survive. We're trying to survive again. That's, you know. And what would be the thing that might help your business? I mean, obviously the cleanup, et cetera, but what would you want people to know about what you're going through and how they can help if they want to try and help? Um, I wish I knew the answer. You know, you just get tired. You just have so many devastations now with the, you know, sure, stop the drilling. But then there goes another 50% of our customers again. You know, we're on the highway that leads to offshore drilling. You know, um, we would love for it to be accident-free, but these things do happen. Um, you know, to get the awareness that we understand we use these products and things will happen, but... It should have never lasted this long, and, you know, it has now. What can we do to better prepare ourselves but to shut off offshore drilling at this time? Once again, the rug's being pulled from us. I mean, if, if that was to go into effect, there's no sense of survival. There's shutting the doors down, and where do I go from here? At this point, you know, if we can get it cleaned up and get things done, you know, we do feel that there's... You know, there'll be struggles, but we'll prob not probably, there's nothing that's guaranteed anymore. We could possibly survive it, but with the um, offshore production being shut down, it's just going to be, I don't, I don't think there'll, there'll be a choice. You know, we won't be able to survive in this area. It would be like a, a coal manufacturer shutting down in a little bitty town, and that's what they lived off of. People who go offshore usually shrimp when they're off their days. It's just hand in hand. And if you lose both things, what do you have left? Mm -hmm. so. Yep. It's, yeah. it's a really scary situation for everybody down here. Mm -hmm. and, and especially people who are up in age and, you know, no other life than that. That's all they know. Mm -hmm. and, and, of course, everybody has their own trials throughout life, but it seems like we've just been hit with so many of them. And... Mm -hmm. You know, how much more can we take? Even the strongest people are just like, you know, does it, when, we don't want a break. We just want devastation to stop. So. Thank you. Thank you.